who are both living retirement with having sort of the people in our lives who help us to go on, who help us to do things, who protect us from the harm in the world. Other people who think they've got rights don't allow other people with rights. That is literally the beginning of a hate crime. The hate crime is what people do at home. They participate in hazing a person by marking their gloves with ink. So when the person puts the gloves on, they become black. They tell other people to use mental health people to voyeur in on a person's life. They page other officials who once worked in the military and they get them to talk in front of retail establishment cameras and they think they're righteous. They openly think they're doing a lawful thing, but they're violating human rights and human dignities in a way that is illegal, immoral, and a violation of civil liberties. You see, in life, we have moments of time to make relationships, and one person lies in the development of relationship to gather information or to gain power. They really are violating human rights. You see, human rights allow a person to move through the community without being mobbed by any person in an official capacity. They allow a person to be in a restaurant without the restaurant owner immorally, illegally, and illicitly thinking they have the right to boyer on them in the toiletry. Think about that, that there are actual video cameras in fire alarms in many restaurants and in many toilets. Do you know which ones have them? Are we told? Are we given the right to the privacy of our bodies? In those moments of time, we have to look, is this a privacy issue? Is this they're concerned with someone stealing food? And literally, how is that possible? People pay for food at the register and they go on. Or they might be gifted food by a kind person passing by who notices a person might need a little help in life and wants to bestow a kindness and Christian love and honor upon them. But hate is something that literally begins at home. I was in a place today that had a hate sign on the wall. It was a complete, utter, total lie. I met that owner. He looked at me with such disdain because he was voyeuring on a conversation that his employee was literally having on his company's behalf on her hourly clock. She thought she was alone. She was literally alone. There was very few customers coming in and out, and we stopped talking every time a customer came in. I was a customer that she invited to stay as long as I wanted, and then she practically lied as she left her job, saying that her boss told me I had to go, but that wasn't true either. She literally just put herself in a difficulty. She lied about who she was. She lied about what she did. She lied about who she was employed by. She lied about being in the National Guard when actually there were stickers of U.S. Army on her car. She may have lied about her orientations. I don't really care. The bottom line is she lied to gather information for someone else. She lied to harm a life. She lied to think she was doing the right thing on a company's name. And if that company participates in that sort of mocking of people's lives, then that's really on the company. It's illegal, I believe. The problem is the owners are lawyers which means anyone who wants to stand against them for harming their life probably doesn't have much chance, especially if they're in bed with local police and sheriff, which isn't fair. In life, we have moments of time to make a life, but when siblings decide to destroy a life with claiming mental health issues and other things so they can take control, and then they lie, steal, and cheat a person out of a life, they don't realize about the implications and liabilities to their own life. You see, hate begins at home. I have a mother who hates a child. Isn't that interesting? We have mothers in the world who literally harm their children with the lies. They tell themselves about what they think are their rights in that child's souls, minds, hearts, and bodies. I had a woman today ask me all sorts of questions about a medical condition I've had a long time, and she thought she was doing the honorable thing. I got the inclination that it was okay to talk to her because she lied about who she was and what she did. But openly, she also had an education that she is not a lawful person is pretty clear that she lied about my freedom to be there is absolutely true, and that her owner was so vile in his soul that he just thought it wasn't okay for someone like me to be in his shop. Isn't that a violation of civil liberties? But see, we have these religious writers who want to throw people out of a store because of who they are. They allegedly call people names like this woman, and I wonder, why does she have a license that doesn't look anything like her at all? And that's a lie she tells. You see, the liars do that. Now, when I try and update my photo, I update it regularly. I don't look the same because I'm not the same person. I've been harmed, I've been handled, I've been mishandled, I've been lied to by my siblings, and I think their game is if they can lie to me enough, then they can say to me, I'm a liar. You see, that's not true. I protect my right to privacy. That is the law of the land in America, that we have the right to the privacy of our medical conditions, our professional interests, and our personal liaisons. But we have a government that is trying to take that away from us. We have police officers that violate our rights regularly under federal law, 
and they get away with it because the politicians here allow it. And if I say this, I end up seeing all sorts of officials on my path literally regularly. Now, did a person give them the right to tag an individual like a dog? You see, there are microchips that we can put in our animals in case they get lost. My brother does that with his bulldogs, or his boxers, rather, and people think it's a good idea. There are definitely judges who think that's a moral aspect of life. It's not. I'm not someone who wanders away. I simply make a choice of where I go based on what the Lord suggests. I see all sorts of interesting things that a reporter who's in the news, who's on television, should be doing. But if they're always dressed in their reporter garb, if they're always looking their little pretty best, if they're always in a car labeled, I'm a reporter, they're not going to get the stories that sell. They're not going to get the information that's needed. And the big league reporters who tout and say and claim that they help people and the little folks aren't really telling the truth. I want you to know I've reached out to a lot of people in my situation. I've asked for help. And you know what? My siblings have called every single one of them and told them not to help based on lying about my mental health. They've involved police in the matter. They've called pastors. They've interrupted my reactions and relationships with business contacts, all so that they can prove I can't get a job. No, they literally destroyed my legal name. They destroyed my right to credit, and none of them take the responsibility for that. And if I talk about it, they want to claim mental health. It's not mental health. It's practically called mobbing. It's a military strategy, and the military uses it regularly against the people they don't like. The problem is, who gives them the right to decide who is likable and who is not? You see, hate begins at home. In America, we are the land of the free and home of the brave, and supposedly loving our mothers and apple pie. But that's not really true. We have people who literally destroy other people's lives based on their ideology, their philosophies, their religious beliefs, and every other aspect of opinion that is not their lawful right to say, do, unto any other person underneath the Lord's of the law of the Lord. You see, the Lord makes all people. The Lord makes the soul of people. The Lord makes the soul of the people who love them. And when people profess to love someone, but they literally play mental health games with them by moving things around in their house and stealing their property and taking away their religious artifacts and actually robbing them blind, that is all federally illegal. It's completely immoral underneath the house of God, but these people are not participants in church. They're not participants in any laws but their own beliefs, and that, in essence, is a hate crime. You see, hate crime involves stalking, and stalking means they can put their little cars on a path that makes them look like they're just driving the community, and yet it's not true. It's totally a way to say, we're watching you, we're right here, we're going to make you very uncomfortable for as long as we possibly can so that you can't do one thing important in your life, and we're going to make you move. And no, the Lord tells a person when to leave a place. The Lord tells a person when to stay a place. The Lord tells a person when to have a conversation that's safe, and then the Lord tells you when the liar comes through. You see, that's the reality of the world, that that small voice that we listen to is a guide. The large voice we listen to is also a guide. I've been yelled at in my brain about firing someone, and every time I try and fire someone, a federal judge or someone appointed by the local law says I'm not allowed to fire an attorney. That's not true. And there is no law that says I have to go get another one before that one is recused. That is not true either. But she's lied in court and said that, and if I say that truthfully, I get hit. I get harmed. The sheriff thinks they have the right to do that, and that's not fair. Now, when I tell the real story, nobody wants to listen. My students don't get off their ass and give me a call and say, hey, can we help? And yet I served them a long time. Yes, it's true they paid me, but there was a relationship there. A relationship that might have been destroyed by someone in my family thinking they had the right to call them and tell them information that frankly and practically was not their right to give out. And that's what hate crimes do. They lie about people's lives. They steal away their privacy of their bodies, their minds, their hearts, their souls. And they ruin relationships. I have a woman in my life who is actually my legal heir. And I'm pretty sure my family is now aware of that because they illicitly, illegally, and immorally got into my records, took photocopies probably, which is actually illegal under federal law. They were not gifted that information. They were never presented copies ever. And openly, she's now lying and saying that a man is possibly harming her in some way. I don't see how that's possible. If I die, she inherits my money. How is that a possibility of harm? Her little children benefit from my life passing. Now... That's a legal liability. She should be paying attention to that responsibility instead of marking me up as if I'm not okay. No, what's not okay is her childish way of handling things. Now, when I say this honestly, does it make me sound like a good fellow? I don't know. 
I simply decided to give my money, something I paid in my entire life, to someone I love, and my insurance brokers know this. Now, if they violate federal law and allow other people to call and ask information and do things, they better provide me that documentation that allows them to do that under federal law. You see, federal rights are what protect every single human being in the land, and hate crimes interfere with our federal rights. They interfere with our civil liberties, they interfere with our human rights of mobility, and people do this in positions of power because they're allowed to, because reporters don't talk about it, because if they do, they get harmed. You see, the people who carry guns do the harm, and that's the truth. Now, when I talk about hate crimes, am I telling you anything you don't know? No, because you've not experienced a hate crime. You've never experienced being hazed, you've never experienced being mobbed, you've never possibly experienced being stolen from, but how would you actually know? You see, it's only the mentally unwell who do all this, right? Not true. People mark people illegally, so in their records, so they can destroy a life, take away human rights, take away legal rights, take away federal rights, take away civil rights, take away mobility. And in my case, I'm walking on foot now because of illegal search and seizures of my vehicles when I simply missed a court date. They should have just allowed me to drive over, park my car someplace safe, and be done with it. They didn't. They cost me a vehicle. Federally, I'd like to know what law allowed them to do that. Locally, I know they think they have the rights to do anything they friggin' want to, and that's immoral. You see, that means that any man, any woman, any child, any teenager can be lied to by local police. Think about that for your own children, that they might get lied to and taken somewhere without their permission, and things done to them without their feelings included, and done things without their soul okay, and they might be now required to do things to help to get themselves out of those problems. You see, when you call police, it's not just the person's name you're calling about. It's your own name, your own computers, your own telephones that get tabulated into a system. A man like me sees a lot of liars in the world. It's unfortunate. It's a gift and a curse when you have that sort of information. But openly, they think they get away with their lie. They don't. They're foolish. They're poor at it. They're bad actors. And openly, they slip all the time by saying comments that is not the rightful information to know. The police officer who hit on me today as a gay person was foolish. I don't care about her life story as absolute truth, but when she lied in the end about her rights in my life, that showed me who she was completely. Now, when I wrap this up, I'm going to tell you, hate begins at home. I'm involved in a hate crime because people are hating on me. They're interfering with my freedom of movement. They're taking away my right to use telephony and email. They're violating my computer without my permission. They've destroyed it by breaking corners off of it. They've marked my gloves, they've cut my clothes, they've cut my baggage, they've cut my luggage, they've ruined my car, and literally, nobody cares. Isn't that the thing? That we don't really care about these situations unless it's happening to us. Now, practically, I'm telling the truth as a reporter and as a observer of life, and openly, it's my life story I'm telling, and I have the right to tell it. Thanks for listening.